Welcome to Professor Z, Guide to Markets and E-Commerce. Dive into trading strategies, stocks, Forex, and crypto. Unlock e-commerce growth. Subscribe now. Professor Z. Don't just watch, learn and earn. Hello and welcome to Professor Z. Without wasting any time, let's get straight into it. I will not gonna waste your time. If you are here, you already know what a Shopify website is. So I'm gonna enter my email. So you enter your email, click next, enter a password. And now we have a bunch of questions here. I'm just gonna click on the bottom and say, I don't wanna help setting this up because we only have 15 minutes to make this. And then they wanna ask us which plan we're going to choose. We could decide later, but I recommend deciding now. So if you try to set it up without selecting your plan, there are a lot of things you just can't implement. You can't unlock your site. You can't do any sample orders. You can't set up payments. So it makes sense just to choose our, our platform now. So I have a link down in the description that will help you decide which one's right for you based on your sales volume. The real main difference is going to be the credit card rate. So there is a threshold when you sell enough that it becomes worth it to get the more expensive plan. If you're just starting out though, try the basic, like the basic one's gonna be perfect for pretty much everybody who doesn't already have sales volume. Then we enter our business address and that'll bring us to our Shopify dashboard. From here, you'll see that in the middle is kind of like your little homepage. This will change over time based on where you are in your, in your store career. But on the left side, this is what we're gonna go through in this video. I wanna start off by making the actual site and then we'll add our products and we can build out everything from there. So if you go down to online store, these little sales channels are essentially the way Shopify sets up different places you can sell. So you can sell on your site, you can sell in person with point of sale. You can sell through like uh, Instagram or TikTok and you, you can have those sales channels down here as well. But let's start off with this online store. If we click on online store, another little sub menu pops up. Don't worry about those just yet, but you'll see a page that looks like this. So we can choose a new theme. Right now we have one called Dawn. That's perfectly fine. But if we click on add theme, we can click on visit theme store. And from here, there are a ton of different Shopify themes. However, many of them are paid. If you want to spend like $300, be my guest. Wait, let's click on browse themes. You're be my guest, but there are 13 free ones that I find do just fine for most websites out. But there are a lot of great ones. Let's say for this video, I'm going to be selling watches. Maybe I'm like a watch retailer. So going down, we can find one that would maybe make the most sense for me. I think this one looks pretty good. And any one that you like, you can click on it. It'll show you the website. You can interact with it a little bit. You can see the mobile site uh, right there as well. And I'm going to say try theme. That is loading right here. While that's happening, we can remove the password. All right, so now we have that theme there. Many people get this wrong and they wonder why that theme is not their main theme, even though they added it. And the reason is because they didn't publish that theme. So uh, this is, again, if you're migrating your site, you can customize this one if you're like changing your theme. And whenever you're done, then you publish it. That's why they have this down in like your drafts down here, but I'm just gonna publish it right now. So we'll say publish, and that way it becomes our primary theme that we're using on this site. So from here, let's just really quickly, I'm not gonna customize it yet. Let's click on view and you'll see it didn't transfer all those soap pictures that we saw here. It just has like dummy placeholders. And this is the backbone of what our site is going to be. Once we have our products, it really builds out a lot faster. Um, so let's go and add our product now. On the left side, you'll see product. We can click on products. And from here, we can add our first product. If you have products already from WooCommerce or BigCommerce or whatever, you can import them, but I'm gonna add one product at a time. All right, so we're gonna start off with the product title. And for uh, this is a watch shop, like I said. So we'll start off with the uh, just this watch here. And of course, in the description, you can do a lot of normal text editing. You can make things bold, italic, underlined. Uh, you could add links to things. So if I say durable stainless steel, maybe we have like a, a page talking about how we source our stainless steel. We can click on the little insert link right here and add a link to either like a YouTube video or something else on our store. Then we can choose our media. So I'm gonna say upload new. And so for this one, I've got a bunch of images. I'm just gonna select all of these images right here and we'll say open and we can choose which one is our primary image based on which one is the largest one. So on the left side, uh, your first image is going to be the primary one. If you wanna rearrange them, you can see the little six dot array showing up on the top right. You can just click and drag them left or right and that'll move them around. You can have a lot of different images here as well. I recommend having you know more than just three or four, um, but you know, Whatever you have is whatever you have. We can also choose the category. Uh, so watches and jewelry, sounds fine. We can choose the pricing for this one. Uh, so the pricing for this one, let's say $4.99. The compare at price, maybe like $5.99. And we could have tax or no tax, of course, depending on uh, where you're located and stuff like that. Cost per item, this is for your own backend. This is not gonna be showing on the site, but you know, if you wanna know what your margins are, you could say maybe this costs you like $200 and that's your profit margin there. We can track the quantity, so I recommend doing that. 
And you, so you'll have your quantity on the left side, you'll have your different locations. So if you have more warehouses, you can track, you know, quantity at each warehouse, which is very advanced. And it's nice that Shopify has that. But let's just say we have maybe like 150 of these. And when we are out of stock, I don't want to continue selling. But you could if you have, you know, back orders, you can have that right here. Um, and if you have an, a, a SKU or a barcode, you can select this and it kind of helps with your stock keeping unit. So I'm going to do that right here and call this one 10,001. Uh, and we could have a barcode. I, I don't have a barcode right now. So we're going to scroll down. This is a physical product. So let's just say it weighs um, like 0 0.2 pounds or something like that. All right. So for variants, if we click on plus, you have a lot of options that are relevant here because we did mention already uh, Shopify knows that this is a watch. So it's going to recommend like case color, dial color, band color, uh, you know, target gender, things like that. But typically this would be like shirt size or any kind of variables you have with your product. So I'm just going to say for this one, maybe it is the dial color, maybe dial color, is something we can change. And maybe we have like a blue one and maybe we have a black one. So I'll just leave those there. And for each one, by the way, if you wanted to kind of add a custom one, you can see add new entry on the bottom and that'll allow you to add your own details here. If you have something that is not, you know, already suggested right there. So I'll say done. And uh, well, let's go down and we can see here each variant is showing up with a new SKU. It automatically adds one. Uh, we can have different prices. We can have different quantities being tracked. And for each one, I highly recommend you add an image for each specific product. I'm going to add a new image. Uh, this is not even the same watch, but just to show you how the images act, I'm going to upload this one and we'll say done. So now we have two different images there. We can add some other meta fields down here, the watch material, different things like that. And on the very bottom, this is incredibly important. When you're showing up in search on Google, this is what it's going to look like. So it just has the name of the product. Uh, you have the uh, just a first sentence of the description and then the price right there. So that's, that'll be showing up on a lot of search engines. But you can customize that. And maybe you want the page title to be uh, inclusive of your name. So maybe Santrell Watch Shop or something like that. So people know what it actually is. You can also customize the meta description. It doesn't have to be the same as the product description. Uh, it could be anything that you want. And typically you want this to be like 160 to 250 characters. Uh, so obviously this is far too long right now. And lastly, we have the URL handle. Some people also call this the slug and that is at the end of your website. So if you are like santrellwatches.com slash whatever. Typically you want it to be short, memorable, easy to type in. As it is, I'm just going to say save and we have our first product. Uh, we could duplicate the product if we have similar products and we want to, you know, make like a, maybe a men's t-shirt and a women's t-shirt and they're just like really similar, but you don't want to have them as different variants. You want distinctly different products. Uh, you could do that, um, but I'm, I'm just going to make another second product right now. So I'm going to say add product. And this one, I'm just going to populate really quickly and not waste your time, but I want to have multiple products in this site. Now, I used ChatGPT before to generate the description. You could also do that using the little auto generation tool in uh, Shopify. So they have their own AI built in and you can choose the tone as well. It could be like persuasive. It could be playful. It could be expert, whatever. Um, so or you could have a custom tone as well. So now I have two products here. We can put them in different collections. So if I click on collections on the left side, we just have one by default called home. Let's create a collection. And this is going to be analog watches. And if you have a lot of products, it may make sense to make this a smart collection instead of a manual collection. Manual, just add them yourself. Smart, you're going to have some conditions and say if the tag is this, if you have uh, a price under a certain amount. So we'll do price for this. We'll say if price is less than is less than $1,000, automatically add it to this, this uh, analog watches under $1,000 collection. And we can add an image for this collection. I have one I'm just going to upload right now. And again, you can change the search engine listing on the bottom. I'm going to say save. And that's essentially how you make collections. Really smart and manual is the big distinction I wanted to show you. If it was manual, you can go into each individual product and add them, you know, one at a time or select them when you make the collection. And then we have gift cards. This is pretty straightforward. I'm going to click on add gift card product so we can list it on our website. People can buy it and send it to relatives or whatever. Uh, and this is going to be called Santrell. We can add an image here. And we can choose the denominations. So let's add a zero to all of these. And we can save the gift card product. So now we have the product section pretty much done. We'll talk about orders and customers and analytics later, but the next logical step is to build out our website. So let's go back down to online store. You'll see it'll just show us the theme right now. We're not changing the theme again, don't worry. But if we click on customize, it'll bring us into the editor here. So within the editor, 
it kind of works like this. The right side, you have a section layout. So everything outlined in a blue box is going to be one section. On the left side, you have kind of a, a hierarchy chart of what's going on from the top to bottom. So you've got your announcement bar, you have your header, you have the different sections in your main website, and then you have your footer as well. So if you, if you collapse these, you'll see these are all the sections we have. Maybe I want to add a section on the bottom, and it's just going to be a featured collection uh, or a featured product. Let's do a featured product. So I'll add a featured product. And then within that, you'll see it kind of goes one level deeper. So instead of the main hierarchy, it goes into that section, featured product, and I can select what the product is. So we'll select the product. Let's say it's the first watch we have. All right, so we have our featured product there. I think this looks pretty good. We can customize a little bit more about this section if you wanted to. So you can change, uh, you know, the media fit. Is it going to be larger or smaller? Let's go back to this hierarchy here. And within that, if you wanted to customize just the text or just one thing, you'll see this is collapsible. But if you open it up, you can click on text. And within that, uh, you can change. So right now, it's just pulling the text from, um, I'm going to delete that. We didn't name our store yet. We will in a second. But let's delete that and just say Santrell, Santrell shop. So you're going to add our own information there just to kind of show you how you'd go about adding things here. Now let's click on back. You can do the same, of course, with the title, the price. You can add other information as well. If you want to add a new block, maybe you want to add the stock keeping unit. I don't really think that's super valuable. All right, so I'm not going to spend too much time building out this entire website. I just want to show you the tools you have available. And if you want to see more information, I have a full like two hour long video about the design aspect of a Shopify store. Uh, but otherwise, the, the tools, like I said, you have the sections on the left side. Uh, you can organize them up and down. So if I want the featured collection to be below the featured product, I just click on it and I drag it down and you'll see it rearranges it. On the very top, we have this section here. And like I said, each one, you can click on the little drop down and change. Uh, for this one, you're going to change slides. Sometimes you can change the text or the images. Anything within that section, you can change by clicking on the drop down. Or if you just click on the section itself, it'll bring you into those section settings. So this is a slideshow. I'm going to get rid of this. I don't really want the slideshow at the top. Uh, we could just have a product and that's perfectly fine. Or you can browse tons of other sections. Uh, maybe just an image banner on the top would be just just fine. Uh, so this image banner, I'm going to select an image. So you can choose an image. If there's a second image, you can add that. I'm just going to leave it as a little blank thing right there. Um, you can have some opacity, make it a little bit less opaque or more opaque uh, with the background. And if you want to edit that text, again, click on back. And then in the drop down, we can change the text here. And I'm just going to delete these buttons. So realistically, I would rather have this text like built into that image right there. So use Photoshop to do that. But just, you know, again, showing you how this works. I'll slide that up to the top. And this is like, a, you know, two minute website we just made that already looks pretty decent. Of course, you can do the same editing with the header up here. So if you click on header, you can change things about that. You can click on the drop down and change uh, what's in the header. So if you want to add more blocks in there, same thing with the announcement bar. You can choose what it actually says right there. And you can have multiple announcement bars that cycle through. So if we click on the little settings icon, we have a lot that we can change here, like the colors I mentioned you can change the different color schemes so each section you choose a scheme and you can choose what colors are in that scheme right here so if you want to make this like a red or a blue or whatever you can change those uh, right in there we can also add our logo and that logo is going to show up on the top of our header so I'll leave it as text right now but you could add that favicon this is really important you can see on the top if I slide my whole screen down you can see on the top there like the Shopify logo I would much rather have our logo there when somebody visits our website. So you can add that typically a very small, like 32 by 32 pixels is a good size for that. You can change your font. You can change, you know, a lot about this. I recommend scrolling through this and figuring out what you want to change on the design aspect of your website. Like I said, though, we only have 15 minutes. So let's save this and continue with other aspects of our store. There's some really important settings. So I'm going to click on exit on the top left. And that'll bring us back to this dashboard here. So let's talk about those important settings I mentioned a second ago. If I go down to settings here, we can first of all change the name of our store. We don't want this to be called my store. So we'll change this. Santrell Watch Shop. I'll save that. We can customize the order ID if you scroll down. I think numbering is just fine. Then the next important thing to do is go down to payments. Make sure there is a way for people to actually pay us. So we'll, activi we'll activate Shopify payments. We can also set up uh, PayPal very easily. I recommend doing both. So there's more ways for people to pay. So we'll activate Shopify payments. We'll submit our details. And it's going to ask you, like, are you a registered business, an LLC, an individual? I'll go with individual for now. And you want to make sure you choose the right details for a customer bank statement so they actually recognize it and don't end up disputing charges because you have some uh, obscure name that they don't remember paying for. And once that's done, that'll show up here and you will be able to accept payments. 
We can also set up our shipping. So if you're drop shipping, you don't really have to worry about this. Otherwise, you can set up manual uh, or automatic things. There's a lot in here you can set up. Uh, so you can set up a new profile, for example, and say maybe all of our products or just our watch product um, is going to be shipped in this specific way. We can call this one, we'll call this one individual watches. Then we can add a shipping zone and let's just say everything in the USA. Now we can add a rate for that and let's just say, hey, free shipping. Um, and it's going to be standard three to four business day. We'll say done. And now we have our shipping zone there. So we'll say save. And of course, we want to get a domain. So click on domains and we're going to say buy a new domain. And our domain is going to be Santrell, SantrellWatchShop.com. That is available, $16 a year. I'll say buy. Make sure your information is all correct. And you can just say buy domain. Now, this is great. You can buy it in other places and maybe save like $2 a year or so. Um, but I find it's just so much easier. It also includes who is privacy and it's already connected to Shopify. So it's so much less work. And of course, if we go down in settings, there's so much more here. But just the last main thing I want to talk about is policies. Uh, there are a lot of policies that are kind of predefined by Shopify. It makes it a lot easier. So terms of service, you can look at a template. So let's just say insert template. They have one pre-made for us. Um, so we can, of course, review this. You should review this, but I'll say publish if you like what they already have. And you can do the same with your return policy. Two last things I want to talk about. One is going to be in discounts. If we want to add a discount, we could just say like, maybe this is going to be uh, $10 off or maybe 10% off. So we'll say discount code is going to be save, save 10, and this could be 10% off. And you can put this on like your banner on the website. And it's a good way to get people to, uh, you know, purchase and, and obviously get those discounts right there. You can have minimums on here. You can have eligibility. So maybe specific customers or specific uh, segments of customers. You can have it limited one per customer or I mean, how many total times. Maybe it's a sponsorship with somebody and the first 100 people get this discount. And do you want this to be combined uh, with any of the other ones? Maybe a shipping discount. You can also combine it. So we'll save that discount. Uh, actually, we need to add a collection. Let's say it's going to be all of our collections. We'll say add. And now I could save that discount and it applies to everything now. So if we click on apps, we can add a lot of different things to our store. Let's click on Shopify app store on the very bottom. Instead of just those like nine recommendations, there are a ton. You can add TikTok on here. You can add OmniSend for emails on here. Um, you can add, you know, so many different things. You can connect with Meta and set up your, you know, your Facebook pixel and things like that, or your Meta pixel rather. But, but TikTok, for example, is a pretty easy one to add. So I can just click on install and it allows me to run TikTok ads and sync it up with my store or sell on TikTok through TikTok shop. And I have full videos on you know that and OmniSend and many other apps you can add but that's where you'd go if you wanted to add apps to your Shopify store. So I hope you found this video helpful. That's a quick rundown of how to set up a Shopify store in just 15 minutes. I recommend next if you have any more questions or you're ready for the next steps, I have a full tutorial that's about two hours long on how to use Shopify uh, really in depth and build a lot more out of your of your store. But I hope this helped you to get your store up and running today. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and elevate your financial knowledge with Professor Z.